So as promised, here's the video on three separate techniques to isolating a subject on a black background. The previous video was isolating on a white background using the same three techniques. I'm going to show you how to do that on black. Let's start with number one, which was the cube, the photo cube, this one right here. When I bought the cube, it came with these things. So this is a black background, it's Velcro, it goes in the back of the cube, and that's pretty much all you have to do. The only thing you gotta do with the camera is set it up to, remember, this is no light, no added light. So just set the camera on a tripod, use your ambient light, put your product inside of the cube, and underexpose your camera. Your camera has a tendency to look for 15% gray and make that your exposure. So if you underexpose a stop or two, then now you're gonna have your subject isolated on a black background. That's probably the easiest way is using a cube like this. There's not much to do, play with the camera. And remember the same issues we had before with the slow shutter speed. Remember to take off the stabilizer on your camera and using a remote so you don't get that movement. That's gonna help you get better photos. Just Velcro this to the back of the background or use any kind of white black paper. Uh, if you have a black card, you could use those in the back. You could always try to remove light from the background so that your subject stands out more. And yes, I have a lot of clients that have asked for objects on black. Food on a black background looks awesome. <laughs> and I have a lot of people that ask for these. So this is another good technique to master and to play around with because you never know who's gonna ask for it. All right, the second technique was using these lights. And I also did those inside of the cube. So when I was using these lights on the white, on the black background that was Velcro to the back of the cube, all I did was move them away from the back, remove the light from the background and concentrate it on your subject. Your subject is gonna pop, your background is gonna stay dark. You get a little bit of a faster shutter speed because you could add lights. And because you can add the light, you can see where you get the texture, the shadow. It helps a little bit more with illuminating your subject and making it pop. It gives you a little bit more creative freedom. Now remember guys, there's links in the video description to all the products I'm using here. Uh, these are affiliate links to Amazon, so if anybody buys anything, I get a small commission. Thanks for supporting the channel. Now let's go on to the third way of making, oh, before I forget, you're still gonna underexpose your photos, but we have the same issues. We're gonna need a slow shutter speed, so you want a remote trigger or a two second timer. Also remember to turn your image stabilizer off your camera so you don't get any unwanted motion when you push the button. And don't move around while you're taking a photo because these half second exposures, any movement could ruin your shot. So now let's go on to the next step, which was using speed lights. I also used a black PVC background, or you can use something like this, which is a cloth or a black paper, anything that you have that's dark. The key is to avoid any light in the background, simple. So I used the diffused light towards the marshmallow and the other light, I put it towards the marshmallow undiffused because I wanted to capture a little bit of smoke. That is the benefit of the speed lights. When I have no light or just ambient light, Capturing the smoke is a lot more difficult because it's wispy, it goes away, it doesn't stay. With the speed light, you freeze the action, you'll freeze the smoke. So that's why I use this backlit looking up towards the marshmallow and I thought the photos look great. That's the benefit of doing this. You get a little bit more creative freedom because you can think outside of the box a little bit and capture those things that you won't be able to do with these other light setups. Again, the technique is easy. Just use your black background and avoid any light onto the background. That's simple. You could use a black card like this to block the light that's gonna go from the marshmallow to go back, or just move your light so you don't spill any light onto the background. That's super easy, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a great time making these marshmallows. <laughs> very tasty, even though they were a little burnt. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. None of that today.